Um, so my name is Sean Norris. I'm the regional manager for Acuity. I've been with the business uh, about six years. I've been lucky enough to work all across the world. Uh, but one thing that has been consistent in my journey is I've been coming here for six years. Um, so I really have seen how the, the industry has evolved, how the culture has changed within the, the, the anti-money laundering world in terms of within the banks. Um, and I think one thing that really stands out for me today is when Mr. Tawari said that the directors are involved, the board is involved. I think that's going to change things significantly here, and we've already seen that. So our interactions with the banks has changed considerably, um, where there's a lot more urgency, there's a lot more focus on trying to do something um, well, um, because the board are involved. And that's always helpful for, for people like me who are trying to provide solutions, if I'm honest. Um, so a little bit about what I want to do. I just want to keep on stressing the importance of sanction screening. Um, we as a business are specialists in that. Um, and I also want to just touch on uh, trade finance in the context of sanctions, so not over-invoicing, under-invoicing, but really about what international banks are starting to think about that will affect your MT700s going forward. So a quick introduction. Um, we've been around for 20 years uh, providing these solutions, but we do three things very, very well. One is we provide software, specialized software for, for screening. We provide the data, so we have PEP data. We don't have 80 million Chinese PEPs in our database yet, um, but you know, we, have, we have the PEP database. And then we have enhanced due diligence lists around dual-use goods, vessels, which I'll, I'll touch on in a moment. Um, like I said, we've, we've got offices all around the world. We don't have one in Mumbai yet, but you know, it's on the cards, I think, in the future. But I would like to say that you know, we have huge focus here. We have a big team that has been built to help focus not only on the banks, but the non-banking financial industry here. That's a huge sector of growth for us as a business. And our approach is very much about educating. Uh, we spend a lot of time educating people on the regulations. So we should get paid by RBI um, going forward. Um, just to talk about regulatory requirements here, we have the RBI who have got um, some strict laws around the policy framework for enhanced monitoring of accounts, terrorist links, swift identification. Um, as Priya mentioned, MSBs, that's a, that's a big focus. Um, it's as important as banks. I would say it's higher risk than just your pure, pure swift messages because if you have partnerships with uh, money service businesses that have been set up and they've got five employees somewhere in the world, that's a huge red flag. Um, the UN is your biggest and toughest, I think, uh, for South Asia. But if you make one US dollar transaction uh, to the wrong guy, OFAC's going to be all over you and they're going to hurt you. So over the last three years, there's been a huge uh, increase in fines. So we just have a look at the, the trend. You know, there were 16 fines last year, totaling $1.1 billion. Obviously, HSBC was a significant chunk of that. But you, you're going to notice that in 2003, there were 153 fines that were relatively small. Um, but going forward, they're only going to get bigger and bigger. And this is purely around sanctions, OK? Sanctions and sanction screening. If we go back up. The biggest challenge with this is, yes, I get fined. Great. I'm a profitable bank. Um, I, can, I can handle that. But what you can't handle is your share price going down. What you can't handle is the confidence in your services going down. And what you don't know is the remediation to fix this problem takes years. And it takes your focus away from dealing and catching bad guys to why did we miss this in the first place. Um, so it's an important part of, of the industry. Trust. You know, I don't know if... Uh, Basically, loss, loss in confidence, bad press, no one wants it. So where are the areas that we need to talk about? This all sounds relatively simple. I need to screen my new customers against the UN list when they walk in the door. That's great, but I've got 5,000 branches. Um, I have got um, very, very common names that we talked about. I'm not always going to get a date of birth, or the date of birth changes. It's not as easy as you think to identify new customers in India because of the scale. Yes, in Singapore, I have 400 people that walk into my branch over a month. I can identify those guys, and I can put two people to deal with that. But when you bring on board thousands and thousands of people, the challenge is increased. Existing customers are one of my favorite subjects in India. You know, we have banks here who have got more customers than the population of the UK, you know, 80 million customers. That becomes a huge challenge when we're trying to do this on an ongoing basis. So you need some pretty... 
Uh, not clever technology, but um, you need a good attitude towards how you're going to deal, deal with it. And you need to, it's like an elephant. You don't eat an elephant all at once. You eat it in small pieces. Um, so existing customers. Swift messages, any cross-border transaction that you're making, you need to be screening against sanction lists. If you're making a payment to uh, Singapore, you need to screen against the MAS list. If you're making a payment to Australia, DFAT list. You need to have the uh, process and policies in place to make sure that you're dealing with this. Forget about te technology for now. The attitude of the bank has to be about how we're going to deal with this in the most professional way. You don't need me to tell you that. You can get Deloitte and you can get KPMG in. You can go and employ someone that's worked in a foreign bank to come and help you do that. Then comes remittances. Uh, the fastest growing area of our business globally is with MSBs. So we work with the biggest uh, MSBs around the world in providing screening solutions. I would argue in some cases they've got better processes in place than a lot of banks here in India. Uh, and it's not because of, um, I think, anything more than enforcement, board involvement, uh, knowledge. But again, that's changing. That's changing a lot. And trade. This is my new favorite subject uh, at Acuity. Um, you know, trade finance, we're going to go and have a look at that now. Let me just get there. When you look at a letter of credit, there's a lot of information that you need to try and uh, identify. There's things like the vessel. There was an Indian uh, corporate very recently, this year, whose goods were shipped to Singapore, and that ship was not on the OFAC list, but that ship was owned by an Iranian company ultimately. So the ultimate beneficial owner of that ship, or the economic uh, person who's going to benefit economically, was Iranian. That ship sat in Singapore for, for ages, and this poor corporate uh, lost thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, okay? something that could have been avoided. So we're looking at ships. We're looking at the people involved in that transaction. Is this bank in a sanctioned country? It could be um, uh, an Australian bank. It won't be an Australian bank, but it could be a, a UAE bank, but it's got an office in uh, uh, Tehran. Okay, that's something that you, you shouldn't be sending. Uh, what else is important? Dual-use goods. This is an area that is difficult to tackle as a bank, uh, but is, it's going to be becoming more and more important. So if you want the report that the, uh, the UK regulators issued, you can speak to Barrett. He'll happily send it to you. But dual-use goods is you cannot send certain goods to certain countries. Graphite. So graphite is in every single pencil that, we, that, that, that you write with. But graphite cannot be sent in certain forms to the Congo, for instance. Um, you cannot send luxury goods to North Korea. Uh, so Kim Jong Il's son the other day wanted to build a lovely resort in the mountains, and uh, that shipment got stopped because it was considered a luxury good. Um, what else? You can't send seafood to Japan because they're scared that it's come from Russia or North Korea and it's been tainted. This is going to poison the population. You know, all these things you need to think about. So dual-use goods is difficult to tackle, but it's something that you need to consider. So if we look at these things, it's the shipper, the sending bank, the beneficiary bank, the buyer and consignee. There we're looking at sanctionless and pepless. You need to also look at the ports. Okay, great, the shipment's going to Cape Town. Well, where is it stopping? Is there any way to identify if it's stopping in Bandra Bass? You need to know that. What ship is it going on? The ship might not be on the OFAC or UN list, but if the ultimate economic beneficiary owns that ship is in Iran, then you're going to be in trouble because you might not be screening against this. HSBC are, Standard Chartered Bank are, all the big banks are doing that, and they're the ones who will stop that transaction where the goods are being loaded. And then obviously the type of goods. So you've got many layers that you need to take care of on an LC um, that the, the banks, the bigger banks around the world are taking care of. So what we as a business and what we can start talking to you about is, is how we do that in a single solution um, to help the banks identify that before the MT700 is created. It's almost like catching the bad guy before he burgles you. Don't catch the bad guy you know, once he's burgled you and he's about to walk out the door. Okay? Catch him before he starts burgling you. Um, this is just an example of a ship. Uh, these ships... They, they uh, change their names daily. They switch off their tracking devices daily. Um, you need to be on top of what goods are going on what ship and does that ship affect your business. I know it's affecting some corporates in India already because those stories have been shared with me. Um, but you need the data. So this is where we as a business provide you data that helps you address some of these concerns. 
It's about the process that you can put in place that can help you. And now with the board being more involved in some of the decisions um, and taking a keener interest in this part of your bank, we are having better discussions. And I think by this time next year, there's going to be a, there's already a huge change in the culture here. Uh, and it's only going to get stronger and stronger. And we as a business are going to be investing more uh, time in making sure the people that we have talking to you are CAM certified. Um, you know, making sure that we are educating the non-banking financial sector. And, and making sure that we're still speaking to FIU and, and all the regulators. Um, we do a lot of things. Uh, we are committed to India. Um, we can sh share a lot of stories. We can't name the banks, but we can share a lot of stories from around the world with you on how to tackle sanction screening, what data is important, um, what things to think about, not, not next year, but in three, four years' time uh, that are going to be important. Um, so we're available. Please. Uh, Come and give us a shout if you want to talk about anything more. We're hungry. I kept it short. Hopefully you guys take something away from that today. Thank you.